All right, in this video we go over section 8.2 partial derivatives, which in, in a nutshell, this is just taking part the derivatives of functions of two or more variables. All right, let's define them first of all. So in Calc 1, you might remember the old formula, the limit f prime of x, limit f of x plus delta x minus the original function f of x divided by delta x as delta x approaches zero. So in this case, well, instead of delta x could be h, so typically different books use delta x, typically other books use h. In our class, well, I guess we're going to use h. In this case, we're going to use a different symbol other than df dx. We're going to use a different d. It's uh, number one. It's like a curly d or a curvy d, which is typically related to, it's typically known as Jacobi's d as well. It's kind of um, up in the air who introduced the symbols, some of them. Some people say, um, it was it was one mathematic mathematician Legendre. Others say it's um, Jacobi, but anyway, we call this the Jacobi's D. And the way we're going to uh, define the partial derivative. So in this case, a function that has two variables, for example, x and y, can underchange with respect x and with respect y okay and this is going to be the symbol so notice in the old version of the partial derivative so we made a slight change in the x so we are going to do essentially the same however for the partial derivative with respect at the variable that changes its x but notice how the second variable y is being held constant on the other hand, for the partial derivative with respect to y, it is y the variable that changes and the other variable x, the one that remains unchanged. Okay, We are not going to do partial derivatives using the limit definition. This is just to, just to show where it's coming from, what is the analogous form from the one that we learned in Calc 1 with respect to the one that we are learning in this class. Otherwise, it would be a very painful process, and trust me, it is. So, let's move on to the next and do some examples. Okay. So we are going to use the exact same differentiation rules we used in Calc 1, the general power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, etc. So, we are going to take the partial derivative of the function x cubed plus y squared. So in this case, we are going to differentiate x cubed, but we are going to treat y to the fourth as a constant. Okay. So I'm going to highlight with green whatever we can differentiate and everything else I'm going to highlight for whatever is constant, so that the derivative of x cubed will be 3x squared. But because y to the fourth is a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero, and that's it, and that's all we have to do. Now this operator is indicating that we take the derivative with respect y, so that's the quantity we are going to differentiate. Everything else will be held constant, so we don't touch it. So. The derivative of a constant is zero, no need to write the zero. The derivative of y to the fourth would be 4y cubed. For the next examples, so we are going to take the derivative of this product. Well, we are not going to use the product rule because we are going to differentiate with respect x. Everything else is going to be held constant. So for example, when when we take, let me go back a, real, a little bit up here. When you took the derivative of y equals 3 plus x, the derivative with respect x of 3 plus x was 
y prime, the derivative of the number, which is 0, plus the derivative of x squared. Let me make it x squared. That's going to be um, 2x. And you have the function y equals 3x squared. The derivative, y prime, we multiply 3 times 2. We kept this, this 3 constant multiplying the x 2 times 3 was ultimately equals to 6x okay so we're going to use this very same type of thinking here so we are going to take the derivative of x cubed which is 3x squared times the constant y to the fourth same here we are going to differentiate in this case with respect to y, the x's will remain constant. That's going to be x cubed, which is constant, times the derivative of y to the 4, which is 4y cubed. Right. Let's do more examples. I have example 2. Well, taking the derivative of this with respect x, the derivative of 2x to the 4 will be 4 times 2, which is 8, x to the 1 less than the original power, which is 3. Minus the derivative of 3x cubed, that's going to be 9x squared times y cubed, which is held constant, plus the derivative of 4x, which is 4 in this case. And then the derivative of 1 with respect x is simply 0, so we're done in this case. Same function, but now being differentiated with respect to y, everything containing x will go to 0 because it's going to be held constant. So the derivative of this constant is 0, the derivative of y cubed, 3 times 3, that's a negative 9 x cubed remains there because that was treated as a constant y squared plus the derivative of 4x which is constant that's 0 and then the derivative of 1 is 0 so that's all for the partial derivative of this function a little bit more on notation so given a function g well um, this is the subscript notation and then and this is the Jacobian notation in which we clearly say that we differentiate partially the function f with respect x and likewise here we clearly state that we differentiate the function x y with respect y so there's kind of a shorter hand it's uh, it's f subscript x and f subscript y okay and this is the meaning, means a partial with respect x and means a partial with respect y. Okay, so in this case we are going to take, we're given a function g. I'm going to take the g partial g with respect s in this case. We're going to use the chain rule. So for the chain rule, leave everything inside as it is. 5 subtract 1 and then multiply by the partial derivative with respect s which in this case is 2s minus t and then the derivative of t squared with respect s is simply 0 so that's 1 and the derivative of the function g with respect t will be okay the same chain rule multiply by the old exponent subtract one to the exponent keep this inside the same All right times the partial derivative with respect t, this is going to go to 0, the derivative of negative st with respect t will be negative s plus 2t. That's 
the two partial derivatives. Using the other notation, this is the same as saying G subscript S, and this is G subscript T. Either notation is fine. In some cases, we might use this one, or in, in some cases later on, we are going to use the compact version of the notation. All right, so let's um, move on to the next page. So in this case, we are going to use the quotient rule to differentiate this function. So we are going to differentiate the part. We're going to use partial f with respect x. <coughs> Let's recall the quotient rule for differentiating. So the derivative of a quotient u v it's going to be u prime v minus v prime u divided by v squared. All right, so the derivative of the numerator with respect x, it's going to be y right, times v, which is the denominator, x squared plus y squared. So let's call this u and this v. Minus the derivative of the denominator with respect x, which is going to be 2x only because y squared is held constant times the numerator without differentiating, which is x, y. The whole thing divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared quantity squared. So we're done with essentially with the calculus part. The next part is the algebra part. We need to keep simplifying this expression. Use the distributing property and here multiply the x's. So we are going to get x squared y plus y cubed minus 2x squared y divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared quantity squared. We are only one step away to get this done. So, because if you notice here, we have like terms. These are going to be like terms. Essentially, we have 1 minus 2, that's going to give us negative 1. I'm going to write the positive first. y cubed minus 2x actually minus x squared y without the 2. I messed up the 2. Alright. The whole thing divided by x squared plus y squared squared. Which is going to be this final answer. But that's only the derivative, the partial derivative with respect x. Now let's find that's fx. Let's do fy, which is the partial derivative of f with respect y. So differentiating the numerator with respect y, we are going to get x times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator this time with respect y times the denominator without being differentiated, which is xy. This divided by x squared plus y squared quantity squared, which equals x cubed plus x y cubed minus 2x y squared. Actually, this is x y squared only. Okay, the whole thing divided by x squared plus y squared quantity squared. And just like the previous example, we have like terms that we might want to simplify. So 1 is going to be x cubed minus 1 minus 2, that's a 1x 
y squared divided by x squared plus y squared quantity squared. So these are the two partial de derivatives of this function f of x and y equals xy over x squared plus y squared. Yes, that one was a bit long. Let's move on to the next one. It's not going to be as as long as the other one. So let's see. We have the partial derivative of the function h with respect u. So that's going to be the derivative of the exponential, which is always the same, e to the u squared minus v squared. So we are going to use a mini chain rule. We are going to differentiate this exponential, the exponent of this exponential function with respect to u. So the derivative is going to be to u and this is going to be zero, so to u. And that's all we have to do. For the partial derivative of h with respect v, we are going to have the same, the exponential, notice the space I'm leaving here for whatever we get from the chain rule. So in this case, with respect v, this goes to zero, and this with respect v becomes negative to v. Final answer. Let's do one with logarithms. All right, recall that the derivative of a logarithmic function, let me write that down. Uh, so that is uh, derivative with respect x of ln of u. It's equal to 1 over u times u prime. It's basically mini chain rule here, there, right? So let's see. Partial f with respect x. That is going to be 1 over the argument, in essentially, times the derivative of the argument with respect x, which in this case it's going to be 2x, plus the derivative of this, well in this case that's a 0, so no need to add anything else. Okay, so just simplifying, just rewriting this, we are going to get the following. We get x squared plus y squ 2y squared in the denominator and 2x in the numerator. Final answer. Okay, let's move on to the second partial derivative, in this case partial with respect y. So in this case again we are going to have 1 over the argument times the derivative of this denominator which is the argument with respect to y. So the derivative of x squared here is going to be 0 because we are differentiating with respect to y but the derivative of this will be for y just for y. Just cleaning up having everything into a single quotient. This is our final answer. Okay. Let's move on to the next page to see what else do we have. Alright, compute the first partial derivatives of the function. Well, this huge looking function. So in this case, we have three variables. We are going to compute three partial derivatives. This time I'm just going to use the compact version, the compact notation, so I'm going to differentiate with respect x, so the derivative of this quantity with respect x is 1 times yz, the derivative of uh, over here there is a little silly typo, this should be an e, not, a, not an x, otherwise it was, it's going to be crazy to differentiate. So with respect x, well in this case there's no x's here, so that's a zero. We don't need to write anything. And here, the derivative of x, l and y with respect x, the derivative of x is 1 times this constant factor, which is l and y. Final answer here. Then we have f with respect y, which is the derivative of this quantity with respect to y is 1 times these factors of this constant, xz. 
the derivative of the exponential is itself e to the y z times the derivative of y z with respect y which in this case is z and the derivative of this last term with respect to y well in this case x is a constant factor we differentiate ln of y so this is x times 1 over y which we can write it as x over y okay finally for this example the partial derivative with respect z we get we differentiate z we get xy minus the derivative of the exponential e to the y z the, the derivative with respect to y is y simply and in this case x l and y doesn't have any z so the derivative for that part is zero and we're done with this example Let's do one similar with higher powers. Compute the first partial derivatives. So fx will be the derivative with respect x. So x to the fifth times seven, five times seven, that's a 35. x to the fourth, everything else is being held constant. y squared, z to the third. The derivative of this with respect x so it's going to be 2x times simply this factor e to the 5 y squared and z to the fourth because in this case in this case we just leave it like this because the exponent doesn't have any access to so we can apply possibly well in fact the product rule and finally, the derivative of this term with respect x, it's going to be z over x. Because the derivative of what ln x is 1 over x times z is the same as saying z over x. So this is final answer to this part of the exercise. f with respect y. All right, the same with respect y. 2 times 7, which is 14 x and y are held constant in this case x squared I'm going to leave a little gap here e to the whatever is in the exponent 5 y squared z to the fourth and in this case I need to add the derivative of 5 y squared which is 10 y I'm going to write the y here and the 10 there the derivative of the last term with this with respect to y well there's no y so it's just zero and we're done with this part finally we get f evaluated at not evaluated actually the partial derivative with respect z so now everything else is going to be constant so 3 times 7 that's 21 x to the fifth y to the second z squared the derivative of this with respect z it's going to be well minus some number x squared whatever variable here it's going to be e to the 5 y squared z to the 4 that remains the same we differentiate the z to the 4 which is 3 z cubed but over here we still have a z so the derivative of z is 1 times the constant factor because ln is a held factor it's held constant that is ln x right and that's it for this partial derivative All right example 6 so now we're given another three variable function and they ask us to evaluate the derivative at uh, 2, 4, 3. Okay, so I'm going to do the computation and then I'm going to show, I'm going to, this, we're going to describe what does it mean. Okay, so we're only finding the derivative of 
the function with respect y. I'm gonna write this x, y, z. I didn't do it in the previous examples because I was not uh, I was not plugging in anything, and in this case, I need to plug in something. So with respect to y, this is going to be the exponential, which is the same, and then times the derivative of the exponential with respect y, which is going to be three y squared. And then from here, let's evaluate at. 2, 4, 3. So this will be 3 times y, which is 4 squared e to the 2 squared plus 4 cubed plus 3 to the 4. Yes, it's going to be huge numbers. So this will be, okay, 4, 4 squared, which is 16. 16 times 3, it's going to be 48 e to the quantity 2 squared which is 4 4 cubed which is 64 and 3 to the 4 which is 81 so if we add these numbers we get the following uh, 68 plus 81 149 so this will be 48 e to the 149 How can we express this um, evaluation in a different way? So another way to express this is partial f with respect y evaluated at the point 2, 4, 3. That's an alternative way to express this using the Jacobian notation versus the compact notation. So just so you know in case you look for other resources or other textbooks so you don't get surprised when you see this notation so when you see this bar this bar means evaluated at in whatever order triple or order pair or order quadruple depending on how many how many um, uh, variables we have this is the value or the slope of f of x, y, z, I'm not going to write the entire function at the point 2, 4, 3 in the direction of y because again partial derivatives mean changes with respect x that's the derivative in the, the slope in the direction of x or in the direction of y or in the direction of c we're going to look at that more closely i believe in the next page so let's have a look yes interpreting partial derivatives that's what's next precisely all right so um, I mean, this sentence right here, uh, partials are just ordinary derivatives with other variables. Yes, that's uh, because notice we're using the exact same rules for differentiation. So all we do is just hold constant the other variables we are not differentiating with respect to. So the interpretation, if you will, the geometric, the geometric interpretation. So let's consider this. Okay, this, uh, I don't know, this surface. Okay, so it's, I'm gonna have this point. It's kinda hard to draw in 3D, so let's make it, let's make this look like 3D. So from here, we may have, we're gonna have the derivative at a point, and the derivative, th there is a change in the direction of x and another differ direct differentiation or change in the direction of y. Alright, and that's uh, the best way to see this is looking at an application here uh, using this word problem that we have right below. Alright, so we have this prof profit function 
with, that describes the profit of producing X number of radios and Y number of televisions per day. Find the marginal profit function. So, when we take the derivative of some profit function, the derivative fun the derivative of that function is oftentimes called marginal profit. So, derivative is marginal. Okay, so, and we're going to make an, a very cool interpretation of this when we take the derivative. So, let's evaluate the partial derivative with respect x of the function p of x, y. Alright, differentiate this with respect x. We get 3 halves times 4 x to the 3 halves minus 1, which is 1 half. The derivative of this quantity right here is going to be 0 because we are differentiating with respect to x only. So the derivative of xy with respect to x is going to be simply y. Okay, we need to simplify this in order to make our lives easier. So 4 times 3, which is 12, divided by 2, this is going to be 12 x to the one half is the same as the square root of x plus y okay. now let's do the other derivative the derivative with respect y So the derivative of the first term will be 0 because we are differentiating with respect to y only. The derivative of the second term will be 3 halves times 6 times y to the 3 halves minus 1, which is 1 half. The derivative of the last term with respect to y will be x. So this will be 6 over 2, that's 3 times 3, that's 9. The square root of y plus x. So now that we have the partial derivatives, let's plug this in and plug that in in their corresponding partial derivative. So this first is going to go in p sub x and the partial derivative with respect x, which is going to be evaluated at 25, comma 36. That's going to be 12 times the square root of x which is 25 plus y which is 36 this is going to be the square root of 25 which is 5 12 times 5 is 60 plus 36 which is 6 plus 3 that's going to be um a minute do I have did I do something wrong no, it doesn't seem like, never mind. 60 plus 36, that's a 96. Okay? We're going to interpret this in a minute. Let's plug in the other value. 25, 36. Okay? So 9 times the square root of y, which is 36. Be careful with the number you plug in. In this case, this is x and y. The y is going to go here. Unlike the previous one, we had x in here. Plus x, which is 25. So the square root of 36, which is 6, times 9 plus 25. That's 54 plus 25, which is going to be... 79. All right, a lot of numbers, a lot of symbols, but how do we interpret this? What does that mean? So the interpretation here will be the way we visualize this is well, number one, look at the sign. Notice the sign is positive. Okay? So the way we interpret this is profit increases by $96 per additional radio 
when producing 25 radius and 36 televisions per day. The interpretation of the next result so the interpretation of this will be profit in this case again because of the positive number here increases by $79 per additional television manufacturer when producing 25 radius radios, not radius, and 36 TVs per day. Right? Why, why a per additional TV here? Because in this case, notice how we differentiate it with respect to Y, and in this case Y represents television. So we are looking at the change with respect to the number of televisions um, produced when the number of TVs were held constant on this in this case it was per additional radio because radio is related to the variable X in this case we differentiated with respect X which tells us the rate of the marginal profit or how much money can be made or loss and when increasing the number, when having that number of TVs and radios, all right, because in this case, if we got in a negative number, the interpretation would have been, well, profit is lost by 96 or by whatever number. So the sign here is what's gonna matter a lot when it comes to interpretation. So positive is increasing or earning as opposed to the other way around. Okay, let's make another application. Uh, here is a good application from chemistry, from ideal gases. So for those who have taken chemistry, you might um, know what I'm talking about. Well, you're not, you won't be expected to know any chemistry here. So, but you might remember, or this might look kind of familiar as PV equals NRT, which is the ideal gas law, where P is the pressure of the gas, the V is the, v is the volume of the gas, N is the number, is the number of moles of the gas, T is the temperature in Kelvin, not in Celsius, and R is the universal constant for gases, which has a specific value of 0 0.082, there's more decimals, atmospheres, liters per mole Kelvin, okay? But we're not going to look at those units at all. It's just just to expand a little bit. All right. So the volume of a certain mass of gas is related to its pressure and in millimeters of mercury and its temperature in degrees Kelvin by this function, by this law. We're going to compute partial V with respect T and partial V with respect P when the temperature is 100 Kelvin and the pressure is 200 millimeters of Mercury, and then we are going to increment interpret our result. Okay, so let's see. Number one, I will rewrite this function because we are going to take derivatives. You don't want variables in the denominator, so this will be 30.9 t p to the negative one. So let's find the partial derivatives 
the partial derivative of the volume with respect t that's going to be the derivative of t is 1 so this will be 30.9 p to the negative 1 which will be simply p in the denominator no need to have the denominator you know um, uh, we you don't need to have this negative exponent. So let's evaluate the partial derivative v at the point where t is 100 and p is 200. So we are going to have 30.9 divided by p, which in this case is 200 no need to have to include any units here all we're going to look is at the renumerical result so 30.9 divided by 200 we get 0 0.1545 i'm going to leave all decimals in this case okay or if you want to round up to 0 0.2 that's fine that's good enough all right, so let's look at the other at the other case. Partial derivative of the volume with respect the temperature. So in this case, not the temperature, the pressure this time. Pressure. So this is going to be negative one times thirty point nine t p to the negative 2. So I'm going to rewrite this function the following way. Negative 30.9 t divided by p squared. And it's now time to evaluate the partial derivative with respect p at the point in which the temperature is 100 degrees Kelvin and the pressure is 200 millimeters of mercury so this will be negative 30.9 t which is 100 divided by 200 quantity squared okay let's simplify that calculation okay let's see if we, let's compute that i'm going to use the graphing calculator so 30.9 times 100 divided by 200 quantities squared and I get zero actually negative 0 0.077 I'm gonna keep three decimals of course I mean there's a there's something going on called uh, significant figures you know you want to be very strict with that okay just you might want to use that however the main point the main objective here is to relate partial derivatives and most importantly interpret its result. So how are we going to increase how we're going to interpret this result? So in this case we are changing the the volume with respect to the temperature. Okay? So the way we interpret this is the volume of a gas increases zero point two in this case uh, what is it liters per degree Kelvin when t equals 100 kelvin and p equals 200 well actually just 200 not 2000 i don't know where did that coming from did that come from 200 millimeters of mercury that's one interpretation now the next interpretation it's going to be an interesting one because now we have a negative sign as a final answer so in this case the volume
of a gas decreases the volume of a gas decreases by here by 0 0.077 notice I didn't write the negative sign because the word decreases already implies the negative sign so no need to write decreases by 0 0.077 liters per millimeter of mercury applied on the gas right so when the temperature is T equals 100 degree Kelvin and the pressure is 200 millimeters per mercury. All right. Yes, a lot of symbols, uh, some chemistry here going on, but think about it. So to understand this better, just think about a balloon. Think about a balloon, what happens uh, what happens if you heat a balloon? Because in this case we are looking at the change of the volume of, of a balloon, of a gas, with respect to time. If you heat a balloon or if you put a balloon inside of a, of a pot with boiling water, the volume is going to increase. Okay, that's, that's the interpretation of the first situation. As opposed to the other interpretation, well in this case we are finding we're trying to find out what is the behavior of a gas when we essentially increase the pressure right where we applying pressure on a gas so think of the same balloon how do we apply pressure on the balloon just squish the balloon squish the balloon what is going to happen the volume is going to go smaller the go the volume is going to is going to decrease so that's uh, a more you know more tangible interpretation of this uh, situation going on okay so this is it for interpreting uh, the re partial derivatives better doing this with real life situations I like the previous example with the profit function and here with some chemistry physics going on at the same time let's move on to the la I think it's it's the last topic which is higher order partial derivative so just the same way we have f of x and then the f with respect x and then the second partial derivative we are going to do the same with partial derivatives so we are going to take the two partial derivatives with respect x the two partial derivatives with respect y and the crossed partial derivatives first we're going to do with with respect x and then respect y and then here first with respect y and then respect x be careful with the notation here because in this case when we use the Jacobian notation we go from right To left okay so that means we do with respect X first and then with respect Y when we use this notation as opposed to the other notation the Lagrangian notation we go the other way around left to right okay let's do a few examples let's do a couple of examples here so find all second partial derivatives of this function f of x y x to the fourth to x squared plus 2x squared y squared plus x cubed y plus y to the fourth all right let's first of all we need the first partial whatsoever anyway so let me take the partial derivative of f with respect x well, which is going to be f subscript x. I'm actually going to use both notations so you get used to both notations. And this will be for x cubed plus 4x y squared and plus 3x squared y 
and this is going to be constant, the derivative is going to be zero. All right. I'm going to do the second partial, well, actually the partial with respect to y, f subscript y, which is partial f with respect y. So with respect to y, this term goes to 0. The derivative of y squared is 2 times 2, which is 4 x squared y. The derivative here of y is 1 times x cubed, which is x cubed. The derivative of y to the 4 will be 4y cubed. Alright, so from here I'm going to take the second partial. With respect x. So in this case, this is going to be 4 times 3 that's 12 x squared the derivative of x is 1 only times 4y squared and 3 times 2 that's a 6 x y alright so that's final answer for this guy right here let me take the derivative f double y which is partial f squared y squared so the derivative of this term with respect to y is 1 times this constant factor which is 4x squared the derivative of x cubed is 0 and the derivative of 4y squared it's going to be 12y squared Right. Okay, so now we need to find the derivative of x and first with respect x and then with respect y. So in this case keep in mind that we go in the opposite direction. So first with respect x and then with respect y. So the function that we already differentiated with respect x we're going to take that and differentiate it with respect y. So this term goes to 0. The derivative of y squared is 2y, so 2 times 4, which is 8, x, y, and the derivative of y, which is 1 times 3x squared. Let's find f with respect to y first, then with respect x. By the way, I forgot the square here. So this is partial, second partial of f with respect, first with respect to y, and then with respect x. So this function that we already differentiated with respect to y, we are going to take it here and differentiate it now with respect x. So this will be 4 times 2, which is 8x. Y, the derivative of this term with respect to y is 0, and then this is 4 times 3, which is 12. Y cubed. All right. And that's final answer. The first two partials and then this, the first partial with respect x and then with respect y and then both with respect x and both with respect y and then the two partials here. I'm afraid I made a silly mistake here. I don't know. Well, let, let me move on to the next example. All right, so finding the second order partial derivatives for this. All right, of course, we need the first partial derivative is itself x squared plus y squared 2x in the front using a mini chain rule and fy 2y e to the x squared plus y squared because we are using a chain rule now with just with respect to y. 
For the second partial, well, this is where the fun begins. Second partial with respect x, notice how in this case we are going to use the product rule x times e to the x squared. So for the product rule, okay, I'm going to write that two times whatever I get from the product rule. Two times the derivative of x, which is 1 times e to the x squared plus y squared plus the derivative of the second one, which is e to the x squared plus y squared times the derivative, which is 2x. Alright. And then let's distribute the 2 here. So 2 times e to the x squared plus y squared plus 4x e to the x squared plus y squared. Final answer. Alright. Let's take the partial derivative with respect y twice. Okay. So, in this case, two times whatever we get from differentiating this product right here. So the derivative of the first factor, which is y, is 1 times e to the x squared plus y squared plus the derivative of the second term, which is the exponential itself, times 2y in this case. Simplifying this, distribute the 2, 2e two e to the x squared plus y squared plus 4y e to the x squared plus y squared. Final answer. Now we need to the other derivatives, the one in which, um, for which we take the first partial with respect x and differentiate it with respect y. So, fx with respect y, we already did it with respect x, now we do it with respect y. So this is going to be 2x e to the x squared plus y squared times, well in this case I'm going to use the usual way to show the, sh the chain rule, so that's going to be 2y because it's with respect y. Simplifying this, 2 times 2, that's 4. And this is final answer. One more. Now, fyx equals, we are going to take the derivative, the one we did already with respect y, and we are going to differentiate it with respect x. So, 2y e to the x squared plus y squared times the derivative with respect x, which is 2x. So this is going to be 4x y e to the x squared plus y squared which is final answer so one thing I wanted to show here is that in in general fxy is equal to fyx however I was looking at the previous example and I didn't get that let me double check everything so with respect x that's 4 cubed and for x y squared correct and 3 x squared y then for x squared okay this is 0 for x squared y x cubed for y squared correct everything good so far all right and yeah everything looks fine with respect to y, this is going to be... Yes, it's not always the case. But in most cases, you will see something like this. Alright? In some cases, not in every case, not in all cases. And this is... This actually concludes the section I wanted to cover in partial derivatives. Alright, see you on the next video.